glasses. It's my eyes to highlight that, to cope with, and just to be happy with. They are adults. They're just like you or me. They have feelings. They have wants. They have goals in life. And to keep them from that, you're putting them in a closet. They have a right to live, too. Everyone should be made more aware um, of the potential of uh, people who are labeled disabled or retarded or, or low-functioning. I want to get a very successful job and go through college. But we thought, what's going to happen when school's over? You know, what happens to Jim? Um, well, your job. I'm always a little leery. I'm overprotective. <laughs> of course, with a, with a handicapped child, you, you just kind of try to take things day to day. Um, I'm afraid of the future. Yeah, I am afraid of the future. I, it's a little, it is a little scary. I just didn't know what there was out there for me. The young years, you're debating of just how the child is going to grow up. You have to grow up out of the crowd. Socially, a society doesn't have a place for these kids and their dreams. I'm looking forward to getting out of high school, ready to go on, move out. My biggest worry or fear is that he's going to get out on his own and people are going to take advantage. Sometimes we, we get a little cautious with them because we don't want them to get his hopes up too high. You know, are they going to really have a career or are they going to always be relying on mom and dad most of your life? She fought very hard to be put in, tr be able to have a chance to go in regular classes. I was put in all in special ed classes as well. Like you say, my greatest fear is that he's going to go backwards and he's going to end up in a wheelchair in bed. I want her to be happy, have a long life, um, and it's hard to face sometimes that I'm not always going to be there or the rest of my family. Will she be able to take care of herself? If something would happen to us, um, perhaps together in an accident of some sort, what would happen to Percy? I want to have a wife and kids. And first, to never underestimate that they know themselves better than we do, um, that they know what they want and what they need and what's important. And I think that we cannot expect Cindy's of the world to go out and survive in a society if we've not allowed them to participate. And the favorite job is to be around people, to be able to help them out. It's not going to hurt for her to learn what she is able to do. I couldn't believe that finally someone knew I was intelligent. I would, wouldn't mind getting out in the game and, and just trying and getting out there with everybody. I don't want to sit back and be by myself. I want to get out there and do stuff because I have high dreams for myself, you know, and I was limiting him to his dreams. Mm -hmm. The two kids have a lot more strength behind them than what we give them credit for a lot of times. I've always liked the art and decorating field and I, that's one thing I want to do. I want him to be able to go as far as he can mm -hmm. with his handicap because I believe they can. They'd rather see me out there involved in these things. Now he's in the high school doing high school work. We know he's able to, to do that and do very well. I think that's really important that we have to give him the chance to, to be with and like everyone else. I feel like I was a person. I would be able to live on my own, and I just go all the way. I I'm finding out that she can achieve some of her dreams. What harm is there to be in treating someone like a real person, <laughs> whatever their disability may be? Besides the schools, the people, everybody, learn to accept the disabilities, understand them, and cope with them. That something that not to be afraid of, and to accept them as individuals. Just let them run their lives and just let them do what they want to do and they know what their needs are and they know 
what's wrong with them. They don't need to be babied all the time. Always believe in yourselves. And if they want to go out and get some, if they want to do, if they want to go out and be somebody, they have the power to do it themselves. Let no one stop, stop them. They can do anything they want to as long as they have their mind to it. They can overcome anything. I have the right to try. I'm no different than anybody else. If they can try it, I can try it. The stories you've just seen of young people with disabilities and their families talking about their future are stories that speak to all of us. They're stories of hopes, ambitions, dreams, fears, anxieties that all parents go through about their kids and all kids think about when they look to their future. What do we do with this? How do we forge ahead and at the same time make sure we're making the right decisions? One way to do this is to develop a plan. Because if we don't plan, the future will be here before we know it. One possible way is to sit down with a group of people that care about you, that are willing to assist you in looking at your future, and to spend time thinking about where do we go from here. This process is called visioning. It can be done in a whole number of different ways, but the most important thing is to start now. Because before we know it, the future will be here, ready or not. Will you be ready?